Now, there is a heritability factor that you've mentioned and you touch on in the book, and there's one particular um, killer that I, I found very interesting, which is Jeffrey Landrigan, who was adopted, and yet you say there was a biological predisposition that he was going to have a life of crime. Yes, Jeffrey Landrigan was an adopted child who was he was adopted very early on into the most wonderful loving home fantastic parents great middle class home environment but you know he was the bad seed right from the get go he was drinking early on i mean his first arrest came when he was just 11 years old and he went on to live a life of crime he killed two men and he's on death row and then a prisoner comes up to him and says you know i've just seen someone just like you over in Arkansas on death row. Who was it? The other man on death row was the biological father that Jeffrey had never met. Like father, like son. There's transmission of criminal violent tendencies quite independent of the environment. And adoption studies have shown that's really true. You know, studies of a lot of babies adopted away. If their father, the biological father, is criminal, they are more likely to be criminal, even though they're raised in a good home. So uh, parents will be watching this and wondering, am I raising a violent child? What can I do? Are there preventative steps that they can take early on that can hopefully avoid a life of crime? Absolutely. Biology is not destiny. We can change the brain predispositions for later crime and violence. First of all, medications do work. Now, no parent wants to put their kids on medication, but it does reduce aggression. Okay, so if you're a parent with an aggressive child, what else can you do? Well, there's one interesting theme of work coming about now on omega-3, fish oil. There's been two studies already showing that prisoners given fish oil, their offending within prison is reduced by 35%. Several more studies are coming up showing that giving fish oil to young children reduces their aggressive and antisocial behavior. Omega-3 is critical for brain structure and brain function. It regulates gene expression. It regulates neurotransmitter functioning. So, you know, if you want a more benign biological intervention, better nutrition is one of the factors. Because we've also seen that children with poor nutrition are more likely to be antisocial and violent. Improve nutrition, you improve the brain, you improve behavior. Also meditation. There are studies showing that meditation, mindfulness training, enhance the frontal region of the brain, the part that we find to be functioning more poorly in offenders. And so, again, that's a very benign technique which can change the brain to change behavior for the better. 